know that just one of your hands has 27 bones in it. Each bone has a special function that allows you to do everyday activities from lifting a cup of water to picking up a heavy object in one hand, while at the same time holding someone else's hand to lead them along. We tend to take our hands for granted. Remember the last time you hurt your finger? Do you remember how it limited you from getting that one important job done? Our hands are so important and they do so much for us. Let's take a closer look at those special tools at the end of our arms and get in touch with how they really work. Starting with your thumb. Did you know that this little member has only three bones in it? And these bones are moved by eight different muscles. It's called opposable because it is opposed to your other fingers, allowing it to move to touch the other four fingers to pick things up and do small or big tasks. And why does your thumb contain the largest nail on your hand? Well, imagine if we just eliminated your thumbnail. Okay, maybe that isn't such a good idea. Your thumbnail and other fingernails provide three key advantages to us. First, they serve as a shield. The tips of our fingers and thumbs are the most prone to injury, and so our nails provide a barrier of protection for us. Second, our nails act as a counterforce when we touch something. If there were no fingernail, we would not have the precise force of, that's available to us. And third, our nails are simply tools at our fingertips for performing day-to-day -day critical activities like scratching and cutting and peeling fruit. But that just describes only one little member of our hand, the nail. Imagine designing a machine to replicate all that your hand does. Yes, this certainly would be an engineering challenge. And according to one doctor who specializes in artificial intelligence, a robotic hand which can perform tasks with the dexterity of a human hand is one of the holy grails of science. Nothing which exists today even comes close. End quote. So why can't engineers and scientists with all of today's technology replicate the human hand? You can probably answer that question yourself. When was the last time you took one of your electronic gadgets and set it on a shelf for two months and it healed itself? Or maybe immersed it in water a few times during that two-month process to help the healing process along? Well, you'd probably end up throwing it away and buying a new one. These two factors alone, self-healing and being waterproof, are tough to replicate, but there are many more, and we will only touch on some of them during the rest of this video. So think back to the last time you had to make a fist. Maybe you were banging on something or trying to break the ice off of your car. Imagine if the bones in your fingers were just a little different. Let's say they were all the same length. Not a big deal, right? Well, maybe. Taking a closer look at your finger, you'll obviously notice the tip of your finger has the shortest bone. For this example, let's say it's two centimeters long. Then the next bone is three centimeters long, followed by the longer bone of five centimeters that meets at your knuckle. Then from your knuckle to the wrist is the last bone of eight centimeters long. For those math whizzes out there, this number sequence is the famous Fibonacci sequence of 2, 3, 5, and 8. These bone lengths make your fingers fold down onto the palm of your hand into a spiral so there is minimal air inside your fist. But if your finger bones were all the same length, let's say 5 centimeters each, you can imagine what a very strange fist that would be. And if you used it to break that ice off your car, your fingers may break because they aren't tightly close to each other in the typical fist protecting one another. Since there are so many amazing things in your hand, let's just focus on one more fact. Do you remember the last time you took your finger and ran it across a smooth pane of glass and sensed a tiny little bump? Scientists have determined that your fingers can discern as little a difference in elevation as small as the human hair. But the nerves inside your finger are not on the surface. They are as much as two millimeters embedded inside your finger. So the feeler nerve is extremely far away from the hair being felt. How can this be? Well, simply, it is mostly the result of your fingerprints. If the tip of your finger had no fingerprint on it, but was smooth, 
you'd have about 100 times less sensation ability. Just look at one of your fingers, specifically its fingerprint. Do you see your fingerprint running in a circular swirling type pattern? Basically, when you move your finger across that glass surface, the fingerprints that are 90 degrees opposed to the hair, and, and you're trying to sense this, are, are what help you to sense it and amplify the signal to that nerve way inside your finger. So fingerprints are not just for identity purposes. They're used every day by you to sense tiny objects no matter which way you move your finger because of the circular fingerprint pattern. As you type on your keyboard and close down this video with your fingers in a moment, just take a few seconds and ask yourself how your hands came into being. Were they formed from many tiny changes over millions of years, or did a master creator design them to, down to the very finest detail, from your fingerprints to the ability for your hand to heal itself, from small cuts to, to broken fingers itself? As Isaac Newton said, in the absence of any other proof, the thumb alone would convince me of God's existence. My friend, you decide.